As hopefully evident from the math primer that I put up, this week we're going to start looking at vibrations basically, or oscillations, motion that repeats itself. Specifically, we're looking at these things called simple harmonic motion. So the harmonic refers to how it has a certain frequency because it repeats itself, and simple here refers to that the motion doesn't lose energy. It keeps all the energy within itself and therefore the amplitudes remain constant. So we can describe this with a simple sinusoidal function. We use cosine by convention, but hopefully this becomes familiar because that's what we went over in the math primer. So these kind of motion arise in very fairly specific system. And one type of these system is these things called spring mass system where it involves a mass and a spring because we have a spring force that's governed by Hooke's law as you stretch it you're gonna get a spring force that pulls you back in fact the more you stretch it the more it pulls back but then as it comes back now you're starting to squish it then your spring pushes it back out so then it winds back and forth back and forth and oscillates simple harmonic motion. Then the last thing about the spring mass system is you can figure out the frequency based on the mass and the spring. This frequency, specifically angular frequency for spring mass system, is related to the spring constant and the mass with a square root sign. So let's apply this to this particular question. In fact, part A doesn't even involve simple harmonic motion. All I'm saying is the spring stretches by a certain amount, supporting a certain mass, to look out for the force constant. So this is applying Hooke's law. So here we have the baby. This is of course, just to make things simple, assuming that the baby doesn't touch the ground or barely touches the ground, so there's no normal force from the ground. What there is, is there's mg and there's a spring force. In this case, because the baby is supported, we'll say that the acceleration is zero, so that when we do sum of forces, in say that direction to be positive, we get that equals zero. So we can solve for here, we're talking about the magnitude. So we can drop that negative sign to find K. We basically take the force divided by the extension, which is all given to us. Spring constant, of course, measuring Newtons per meter. Simple as that. And we figured that out because we can now apply this K into my simple harmonic motion. Part B, they're asking for the time for one complete bounce. That's the period denoted by big T. And for a sine function, you can remember that omega, not W, omega stands for angular frequency, which tells you how much angle you cover over a certain amount of time. So for one whole period, you're gonna cover 2 pi radians worth of angle. So shifting this around, we know that the period is 2 pi over omega. So then we define omega. We know omega is the square root of k over m. We now have k and we have also m, which is the mass of the baby shaking up and down. And you can double check that unit there and the unit turns out to be per second. What's hidden here is you can talk about it in terms of radians per second, but radians is basically a ratio between your arc length and your radius. So it's meter per meter in that sense is units less. With this omega, we can take two pi and divide by omega. And if you just apply that into your calculator, you find that it's basically designed to give you one second. Part C, they're asking about the maximum velocity given a certain amplitude. For these kind of motion, because it's governed by that sinusoidal function, if we want the velocity, we take the derivative of my position and the derivative of cosine becomes a negative sign. But because we have omega times t inside, the chain rule says we have to multiply the whole thing by omega. What that lets us know is this part a omega becomes v max. So knowing omega and now knowing the amplitude, we can actually quickly work out the maximum speed in meters per second.
So once you get used to describing the simple harmonic motion or oscillations using that sinusoidal function, and knowing how to interpret the various parameters in there, as soon as you see that we have a spring mass system, we can count on that piece as well, and that will basically cover half of the question of this chapter because it's one of the two system we'll be looking at in this chapter.